Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's lab. Uh, so this week, we will learn that how to use OpenAI, so one of the most famous, uh, famous large language models, to analyze our Twitter data. So here, I already have about 1,500 tweets uh, talk about gun control and also gun violence uh, in Virginia. And those tweets were connected with the uh, Twitter API v1, so that you can see the ID, uh, tweet text, etc., et are in the same uh, document. Uh, so if you connect tweets in different uh, format, or you are using the v2, so you can check the other another code that I posted on my uh, GitHub. All right, so we're going to use uh, OpenAI to analyze the tweet text. Um, so you will need the OpenAI API. Uh, which you can um, pay um, and buy that one from OpenAI website. Uh, you all um, uh, and you also need to uh, a connection string to your MongoDB database. So if you uh, connected, uh, if you stored your Twitter data in MongoDB uh, database. Uh, so uh, if you are using MongoDB, so you may need to go to the connect, and then you click driver. And you choose Python as a driver, and now your string will be showing up here. Uh, you need to copy and paste this string to your configure.ini file, and then you can use uh, the Python code that uh, I provided. Uh, and also, don't forget to change uh, the password to your password. So, you need to manually type your password in the connection string. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and download the, the Python code. So, that's a notebook on my GitHub. And for some reason, it's not showing up on GitHub. So that's fine. And we just go ahead and download. And then we go to our SageMaker. So we open the, uh, the notebook instance. Um, so this is the configure.ini file, where you should store your, uh, you should store your connection string to your MongoDB. Uh, you also need to store the, the API key uh, from your OpenAI. All right, so I'm going to upload the, uh, the Python notebook. OK, um, let's open it. Uh, so, uh, so we need uh, the two Python libraries to install. So the first one is a PyMongo. So that's one that to, we want to communicate with our uh, MongoDB database. Uh, the second one is OpenAI Python library. OK, so that will make the, the calls, API calls uh, to OpenAI. Uh, let's also import the Python uh, library. So uh, you should have your configure.ini file. So uh, mine is here. So make sure that they are in the same folder. Uh, within your configure.ini, you should have your, uh, your file, your tokens uh, organized like this. So my OpenAI and my OpenAI API equals so this will then you paste your uh, uh, OpenAI API key and also my Mongo and connection equals your connection string and don't forget to change the password. Uh, so here we are going to load the configure uh, the credentials and then we are going to connect to our uh, MongoDB database. So uh, my database is called Tweet and my collection name is called Gang and Score VA. So that's why in my Python code, I will connect to my tweet database. And the collection, I will use a gun and, uh, and score VA. So uh, feel free to change those uh, names to your database and to your collection name. All right, uh, so now we're going to uh, extract the data from our MongoDB. So we're going to extract the Twitter data. So uh, you can uh, query all the tweets and also pass that one to OpenAI. Uh, but remember that OpenAI, uh, as of today, is not free. So um, if you have, let's say, millions of tweets, you don't want to pass all the tweets to OpenAI to process, because that will be very, very expensive. So I would recommend that write a query that uh, find out the tweets that you are interested in and pass that those tweets into uh, to the OpenAI and also process, analyze those tweets. So. Um, this is a query that uh, I use to, to query my database. So you can also write different queries. Uh, I highly recommend use campers, so which is this one. So campers is a GUI for MongoDB, and it is also free. So you can design your query here. And then 
they will translate your query into a Python code, and you can copy and paste that code to your notebook, Python notebook. So, and also you may also to build your, the index uh, before you run the queries, especially if you have a huge number of the tweets. Uh, so here, for example, uh, I have the text index, which uh, is uh, uh, on the uh, tweet text, and the index tab is also tweet is also the text, so that I can perform a text search. So uh, I'm now going to run a query. So I want to see that where the I will do a text search dollar search. So for example, I want to find out the tweets that contain the keyword shooting. Okay, and I just want to retain the ID of the tweets and also the text of the tweets. And I also want to sort the tweets based on the favorite count. So because uh, I think that the most favorite tweets are the more imp are the most important tweets, uh, so I will sort based on the favorite count with descending order, and I limit the number tweet to be one hundred so that uh, I don't want to process more than one hundred tweets. Uh, and I'm going to click find. So now you can see I have uh, seventy three tweets that being uh, query so um, retained. And now I'm going to export the Python code, so not the, the data. So I'm going to export Python code. So make sure you check this one, driver syntax, and you choose uh, the language that you're using. So I'm using Python. Uh, so we don't need the first line. The first line is simply that build to the connection. So we already have the connection. So, uh, so you can just copy this part, Control-C. Um, and then you can paste your code uh, here. So if I just paste, so that's how I get this uh, code. So you can see uh, campers can translate that uh, query into the Python code. So now I'm going to run it. So now I have the tweet that is in, uh, uh, in Python. And next, I'm going to store all the tweets into my tweet and score data uh, list. So that's a, that's, that's a Python list. Uh, the reason I want to do that is because I don't want to run the queries every time, so I put that into this list, and then I will process the data in this list. I also want to remove the URLs, so this uh, will remove the URLs uh, because it will save my tokens, and also uh, when you collect Twitter data, so Twitter API will return the, set, the URLs in a separate field, so you, so you don't need to, uh, you really don't need URLs. I also will remove, replace all the new lines um, so that I, I will make sure that all the tweets is, is in a single line uh, so that OpenAI will treat uh, each single tweet as a single document. Okay, so I'm going to store all the tweets into my uh, tweet and score data list. And I will see how many tweets I have. So here I have uh, 73 tweets. All right, so now we are going to set up our OpenAI. So we are going to import OpenAI. Uh, so here we load OpenAI key and we pass that one to OpenAI. Uh, three things that you may consider, you may need to consider. Uh, the first is choose the model. So uh, so here we are using the uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, so which is kind of the uh, the the cheapest one. Uh, uh, so uh, yesterday the GP4 was available. So uh, you can see they can process uh, more tokens and also they have better accuracies and however they are more uh, expensive so that was um, and also they have they are trained with the latest data so uh, but the GPT-4 is uh, more expensive so I'm using GPT-3 Turbo we can see it can only process about 4,000 tokens uh, however you can also use uh, this version to process uh, more tokens but that will be also more expensive. Uh, so that's the model that I choose uh, in this uh, Python code. You can, of course, change the model to a different one. And you also need to consider the token size. So how many tokens you want to process. So the token is a numeric uh, expression uh, that uh, computers store our languages. So uh, generally speaking, uh, every 100 tokens uh, equals uh, 75 words in English um, and also 
uh, OpenAI will charge you based on the tokens. So the tokens that uh, include the tokens that you provided in the prompt, so that is the instruction you, you tell, you, uh, you provide to OpenAI, and also tokens that in the completion, so the, uh, the tokens that uh, OpenAI uh, responsed, so they will charge the tokens that is used in both uh, parts. So uh, you can get a more accurate estimate of your tokens on OpenAI website. So that's here. Uh, so you can see, for example, if you look at these examples, uh, you can see here, uh, for example, don't equals uh, two tokens. Uh, and also uh, this comma also uh, equals one token. Okay, and also you can see those numbers, this number actually uh, will cost you uh, four tokens. So if you need really need a very, very accurate uh, estimate, uh, you can use this uh, web page that is on OpenAI. And uh, finally, uh, you can also change the different uh, temperatures. So the temperature is a variable that uh, uh, we are using the default value of zero, which is the lowest uh, value. So lower temperatures will give you more consistent output. So if you give the, the same in, um, prompt, OpenAI will always give you the same response. However, if you give it a, a high values, for example, 0.5, uh, etc., and you will have more diverse or creative results. So your, your, your response will be different. All right. And so those are the three things that you need to consider. So the token size, uh, uh, and also the temperature, and also the model, uh, different type of the models. And we also built this uh, help function. So that will help you to pass the prompt to the OpenAI. Uh, so we will call this help function later when we analyze Twitter data. So let's build this function. All right. Um, uh, so now we are going to perform a very uh, simple sentiment analysis. So OpenAI is uh, really, really powerful and can do a lot of things in analyzing the text message. Uh, the way that we allow we ask OpenAI to do the uh, analysis is that you just tell the instruction in the natural language, which we call it prompt. So for example, what is the sentiment of the following tweet? And then you will pass your Twitter. So we are using this F string to pass a tweet. Uh, so here we have for loop. So for each single tweet, we are asking OpenAI, so what is the sentiment of this tweet? We also ask OpenAI to return the result with a one word, either positive, negative, or neutral. And then we will uh, pass that prompt to OpenAI uh, through that help function, and we will receive the response. And once we got the response, we will save our result into our MongoDB database. So let's run this cell. Uh, so now you can see we are processing uh, the 73 tweets. Uh, so this may take uh, less than a single minute. All right, uh, so now this process is complete. Uh, so let's actually go to our uh, website. Uh, so let's look at the result. So remember that we didn't process the entire data set. We only processed um, a subset of the tweets, which is 73 tweets. So let's make a query where we want to find out the tweets that contain uh, the sentimental result. So not equal to null value. And now let's return uh, those fields, which will be sentiment, and also tweet text. So let's hit apply. And now you can see those are the results that are written by, among, uh, by OpenAI. So this one, it is negative, and this one is negative. We have the neutral one. And we also have some uh, few tweets that are positive. Okay. Um, so next, we're going, uh, we can also uh, translate the tweets into a different language. So for example, here I'm asking uh, OpenAI to translate the following, following tweets into Chinese uh, because uh, uh, I'm a native Chinese speaker, so I'm interested in that how uh, uh, can we translate all the tweets into Chinese. Uh, you can also try in the other languages. So let's run this one. Uh, so sometimes a translate might be slower than a sentiment analysis. So 
Uh, so this may take a longer time. All right, uh, so now the translate is also complete. Um, so let's look at the translate result. So I'm going to see the translate. All right, uh, so as a native Chinese speaker, I would say the translation is pretty good. Uh, and also you can see sometimes the uh, OpenAI can recognize those are their uh, Twitter usernames and also those are the person names. So they will ignore the, so they will not translate the, the names, but they will translate the other content. Okay. And we can also identify the emotions. So for example, here we are asking OpenAI, so does the tweet express anger? Uh, you can also try the other uh, type of emotion like happiness, uh, depression, etc. Uh, but here we are going to try that whether or not those tweets express anger. And if yes, uh, we will see true. And if not, uh, we will see false. And uh, similarly, we will return the result into our uh, MongoDB database. Okay, uh, so sometimes uh, you will see that the, the progress bar is frozen. Uh, I, I don't know why, but uh, if that is the case, if you saw it is frozen, so it turns out if you click the interrupt, uh, it will continue moving. So uh, I don't know how to resolve this issue. So if you know, please leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, if you see this one is frozen, uh, you can just simply click this interrupt to let it continue. All right, uh, so now let's look at uh, do the uh, contain angers. So I'm going to keep adding anger and also hit apply. So now you can see the first one is the false, this one is false, false, and yeah, and also we have uh, uh, this one that is true. So that it identify emotions. Uh, we can also try to extract entities. For example, we can ask OpenAI to identify person names, or organization names, or even like uh, place names, um, company names, etc. Uh, we can also ask OpenAI to return the response in a JSON format. Uh, if you prefer CSV format, and you can also try that. Um, uh, however, so uh, because I collected tweets with uh, V1, so in V1, the tweets does not contain those entity informations. Uh, if you are using Tweet API v2 and you collected tweets at with a v2, those tweets actually contain the mentioned entities. So, uh, so if you're using a new API, so actually you don't need OpenAI to extract entities because Twitter already uh, extract those entities in v2 uh, for you. All right, so let's try this uh, entity ex extraction. And we said we want the response into a JSON document. And then we will also save this uh, JSON document into our uh, MongoDB database as well. All right, uh, so now let's look at the result in our uh, database. So that is also one and apply. OK, so this extract entities. So uh, we have some unknown and see, okay, uh, let's see. If, okay, so this one we have Congress that is uh, recognized as an organization. Uh, do we have, and also in United States. Okay, uh, we also have a person that being organized, recognized. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and also you can see those are uh, organized in the list. Uh, so that's a JSON document. OK, uh, so, so finally, uh, we also want uh, the OpenAI to summarize the tweet text message. So um, so here, because uh, again, we are using the 3.5 Turbo version, so we can process 4,000 tokens each single time. That also include the prompt and also response. So, so I'm going to. Uh, uh, process a tweet in batches. So every time I will only process summarize 50 tweets because um, uh, the limitation of the single tweet is 280 characters, but we may have tweets that are beyond that limitation. So 
I'm going to process no more than 50 tweets each single time. However, uh, if your tweets are short and or if you are using a different model that can process, for example, ChatGPT4 can process 1,600, uh, I forgot the exact number. Um, yes, it's actually uh, 16,000 tokens or, um, or even more tokens, and uh, you can just uh, change the size and to be a, a larger size so that every time, every single time, you can process a longer tweet, uh, more tweets. So here, each time, I'm going to process uh, 50 tweets. Uh, so I see, okay, I want uh, OpenAI to summarize those following tweets and uh, no more than 50 words of the summary. And I also want folks why people oppose gun control. So I want OpenAI to give me a reason that among those 50 tweets or less than 50 tweets, what are the reasons that people think gun control, they, they don't support gun control. So let's try that. We will also uh, save the result into our MongoDB database. Uh, you can see here are the results. So because they don't believe uh, it will prevent shootings, uh, and those are more like domestic violence, um, um, and also the criminals, we are not obey laws, um, uh, and some also argue that gun control laws are already exist, but uh, haven't stopped shootings. Okay, and also mental health and other issues should be addressed instead. Okay, so those are the kind of the reason that when people oppose gun control. Uh, let's also change our pump. Let's see why people support gun control. So from the same data, we want also uh, extract the reason why they, why people that uh, support gun controls. And here we can see the because they believe that prevent shootings and increase safety. And uh, uh, this said that gun control can reduce number of mass routines. Uh, they also criticize uh, politicians. Um, okay, um, and also uh, they also express frustrations that uh, gun controls they fade away until the next routine occurs. All right, so you can see that for the same type data, so we can ask OpenAI to summarize the text messages, but. Uh, from different uh, perspective or focus on different aspects. All right, so that is about our analyzing part. So we use OpenAI to analyze our tweet text message. Uh, we tried the uh, sentimental analysis, translation, uh, emotion, identification, uh, extract entities, and also summarize. So there are also a lot of other uh, things that you can do with OpenAI, so feel free to try to write your own prompt and also see what you can get. Uh, so finally, so once we have those results, we want to um, uh, present our result. So the best way is that to use visualization. So let's go back to our MongoDB uh, database. Uh, so if we uh, refresh our database, uh, so for the summary, so we put that into a separate section. So we can see here uh, we have the fall result. So those are the first two summaries that people oppose. And also those are the two summaries that people support. So let's go ahead and create a dashboard. So uh, we're going to go to the use the MongoDB charts. Uh, to save our time, so we're going to use our previous dashboard in lab 11 and we are going to add additional charts to show the result from the open AI uh, analysis uh, so first uh, so let's create a bar chart uh, we are going to use uh, the gun VA because uh, for sentimental analysis and also emotion detection all the results are saved in the in the gun VA collection um, so uh, let's say we want to show the number of the tweets that are uh, uh, positive, negative, or neutral. So let's find out the sentiment K that we created uh, in this analysis. So that is sentiment. We put that one into categories. And we put ID into this aggregation. We want to use count. We can see majority of the tweets are no value because we only processed 
73 tweets. Uh, so we can also create a filter, and then we bring the sentiment to the filter uh, as well. Uh, so here, let's say we don't want the null values, so we exclude the null values of the empty strings. So now you can see we have uh, more tweets that are uh, negative. All right, so we have more tweets are negative. Uh, a few tweets are neutral, and we have only five tweets which are positive, which kind of makes sense because uh, we are talk uh, we are talking about gun control, which is not a not a happy topic. Uh, let's also bring the angers. So how many tweets are uh, express angers? So let's put that one to the uh, here series. And uh, we can let's also uh, fill out the null values. For the anger. Okay, uh, we can see that uh, uh, we have actually six tweets that expressed anger and which are all in this negative category, which uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, you can give this title, let's see, uh, tweet sentiment and emotion. Um, and you may also give a very short description telling that, okay, so this is based on the 73 tweets uh, containing, containing keyword shooting. Okay, so it's not the, it's not all the tweets that we collected, but it's only the part of the tweet that contains a specific keyword. All right, so that is our uh, bar chart. So we are going to uh, put it here. So so those are the charts that we created in our previous lab. Uh, so that's our uh, bar chart. Uh, next, we are going to visualize uh, the extracted persons and also organizations. Uh, so that is in this extracted item. Uh, so you can see that both are not recognized as list. So let's first, let's make a query. Uh, let's fill out those uh, tweets that do not contain any extracted items. So extracted item uh, not equal to null value. Apply. Okay. Uh, so now uh, we can see both are recognized as list. Uh, so let's use a heat map let's, this time. So we're going to use heat map uh, to compare the extra, uh, identified persons versus identified organizations. So I'm going to drag person to the X category on one this list. I'm going to drag organization to the Y category on one the list. I'm going to drag ID to this. Uh, Aggregation, I will use count. All right. Uh, so now you can see that um, uh, most tweets, so among those 73 tweets, uh, we have uh, 31 tweets that does not contain anything, so unknown versus unknown. However, we do have a CNN that mentioned three times, uh, which uh, is an organization and we have Congress, uh, etc. Uh, we also have the uh, NS, NBC, MSNBC, which mentioned together with TMWINSCTT. Uh, I don't know that uh, person. So that is also uh, is a person that rec uh, mentioned together with this. Um, we see NPR has been mentioned a lot. So uh, mentioned with uh, uh, Donald Trump one time, mentioned with uh, this person one time, and mentioned with this person another time, and also this person another time. All right. Um, in terms of the person, uh, so we can see this person has mentioned with that organization. Um, all right, so I think that's uh, pretty nice. So we can see the relationship between the mentioned organizations and also mentioned persons. 
Uh, so let's call this one persons and organizations. Uh, you may also say that is based on 33 tweets. Okay. All right, so that is our heat map. Um, we are going to save and close this one. All right, uh, so finally, uh, we're going to view the summaries. So because the summary is stored in a separate collection, so let's go to our project. Uh, it's still in the same database, so Twitter database. Uh, you will see that we have a new collection that's been created called the Tweet Summary. Uh, in Tweet Summary, we have uh, four entries uh, because we uh, have two batches in each analysis. And in first analysis, we summarized a post gun control, reason that a post gun control. And in the second analysis, we summarized the reason that uh, support gun control. So we're going to use a, a table to show those results. So I'm going to use table. I'm going to drag the summary to the categories. Uh, I'm going to drag this ID list to these uh, values uh, where I'm going to use the, the length of the list so that how many tweets are in this summary. So, uh, And also for the fields, uh, I'm going to wrap the text. Okay. Uh, so that is the first summary. We can see that it based on the 23 tweets. And that is the second paragraph that is based on the uh, 50 tweets. I believe those two are the reason that people oppose gun control. And here we have this paragraph that based on 50 tweets that is support gun control. Another paragraph based on uh, 23 tweets that also support gun control. The reason that why, why they also support gun control. Okay. And I'm going to put that one to here. All right, uh, so, okay, and I think that's pretty much about um, this lab. So we used OpenAI, which is a really, really powerful tool to understand, analyze uh, text message, and we apply that to our Twitter data. And we also stored our data into MongoDB. So finally, we can also create those visualizations.